Welcome to Falls from Iron, ladies and gentlemen. We're here again, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Well, I'm not too sure about that, to be honest with you. It's Friday evening, for goodness sake. Don't expect too much here, let's be honest. Two middle-aged blokes, what do you want? Um, uh, I'm saying nothing, Rob, through fear of getting into trouble. I'll leave that one alone. Fair enough. Well, before we get into to the main event, Duke, could you do us a favour and press your big red button? Oh. Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security, and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Come on, you irons. I don't know about you, mate, and I don't know about you guys in the live chat. I am not looking forward to this tomorrow duke i really am not i've got this horrible feeling that it's gonna go a bit pear-shaped which isn't quite like me i'm usually quite optimistic but i i i find it difficult to to feel optimistic because there's nothing that i'm seeing about how we're playing with regret that makes me go oh yeah and no, i will be all right leicester have hit a bit of a form at the right time as we've hit the form at the wrong time and we're meeting in the middle. I mean, there's only one goal that actually separates us in terms of our league placings. We're level on points. They've got a, a goal difference that's one goal better off than us. But the momentum seems to be with them and not with us. And I'm, I'm really concerned, mate. Yeah, I mean, listen. I, I put something out earlier. We've got access to it now. Um... Moise's record at this point of um, EFL, uh, the League Cup games and League games is actually worse than Pellegrini's at the point that Pellegrini was sacked. Yes, it's remarkably two, reminiscent. Two, two defeats more, two draws less. Um, I mean, I think he's gone, Rob. I, I really do. Despite the talk that's coming out of the club, and despite the 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 in the nose and and everything else, I I, I think he's gone. I I don't see how um, I don't see how he comes back from this, Rob. I really don't. I I, I personally think that um, enough for me now. Enough's enough. Um, I, as as you know, as you. As you all know, okay, every single person that's watched these videos over the last four or five months, three months, know that I've been behind the man. I've, I've been behind the man from, you know, from when we started having that. I, I said, I think, I, I, you know, it wasn't so long ago, I said we were in a relegation battle and he was essentially fighting for, fighting for his, uh, his job. We then went on a run where we had some real good, real good form that included the Europa League, and, and rightly so, it should do because we're the best team in the fucking thing. Mm. Um, and now, now we're at a point where there's a lot of stars out there, Rob, former footballers, TV pundits. Yeah, uh, commentators, everything else. 
that are blaming our blaming our players at the minute. I just I just read something on the One Football app, not that we're sponsored by them, but we'd like to be. Um, that Agbon Lahore is is slagging off Skamaka. He's, he's he's blaming Skamaka for our downturn and 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 our misfortunes. Well, no, no, because you're not playing to his strengths. You're not playing to a player's strengths. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. Another striker. Wait. Oh yeah. Um, I just good evening, Paul. Uh, I saw you on camera last night. Not that I was Ooh. watching. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'll be honest with you, Rob. I part of me is part of me is um, I don't care what happens tomorrow. I, really? I don't care what happens tomorrow. I would like him to be gone. Whether we win, whether we lose, I would like him to be gone. I think he's even if it's convincing. Even if it's convincing, it it papers over a crack, Rob. It it literally, you know what? It don't even paper over a crack. It paints over a crack. There's no strength there at all. That's all it does. It's just a little bit of a, a little bit of emulsion over the top. It makes it look like it's gone, and it really isn't. It really isn't a clue. Um, For me. A convincing win tomorrow does just that. It papers over. Um, you know, if he listen, all right, let me let me put this into context. If tomorrow, if tomorrow we go out and we win four nil, yeah, we wipe the floor with them with some impressive, slick attacking football. All the players that we saw. Um, <laughs> all the player, all the all the all the form from players that we saw over the last two years, you know, mm-hmm. Suchek, Bowen, yeah, Sufal becomes the best crosser in the world. <laughs> um, if all of this happens, and he keeps his job because of it, then I want to see it again against Arsenal. I want to see the same attacking tactics, Rob. I want to see us go out there and dominate yep. teams. I want to see us get balls into Skamaka and get people in and around him for support. Yep. Because one one swallow does not make a summer. Makes for a fucking great evening. But one swallow does not make a summer. And one win doesn't make a season, Rob. You know, regardless of what happens tomorrow... If, Jesus, what is going on? Friday night in Lewisham. You should know by now. Yeah, it's right, standard. Jesus, there was a lot there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Like police I say, station in Europe, ladies and gentlemen, right yeah, next door. Eight floors, four above and four below. Um, yeah, like I say, if he, if he doesn't... If he doesn't learn from the errors of his ways, Rob, then there's no point, regardless of what happens tomorrow. We, like I say, we could win tomorrow, and everyone's like, "Oh, we're back! It's amazing! Woo! Look at the way he changed tactics. Look at the way he did this, he did that." Yeah, that's great. What happens against Arsenal? What happens, you know, in in six weeks' time, and we go back to the same old dross? Me, personally, I'm done. Me personally, I think he's done. Me, personally, I'd love, I'd love to see Podge at West Ham. I'd love it. It would show a sign that the club are serious with what they've started, hmm. i.e. These, this last two-year um, game plan, the step-ups we've made. It would show it. I don't see it. I can't see it. I, I'd love it, but... I turned it to Keegan then. I'd love it. Um, but... I, I can't see it, Rob. You know, I, I honestly, I can see us. Um, I can see us getting a win tomorrow, right? I can, to a degree, whether we fluke it or not. I can see us getting a win, and I can see it being exactly like I've said. Woo, look at this, yay, fans! And then what happens is in two weeks' time, it all or six weeks' time, it all goes wrong again. We go into that. We, we we start to go into the second week of of January. We start looking. Um, we, we sack him. We've got two weeks left before the end of the transfer window. 
we've got, you know, a, a, a manager to bring in, players to bring in that he might want. It, it's difficult. It's difficult. Do I think the fans will be him to be behind him tomorrow? Oh, the, the, the fans will start behind the team. I don't, the as well. I don't even think they will after after Wednesday. I don't think they will. I, I, no, I think, I, I think the fans will be behind the team 100%. Right. Ah, there's the difference, Rob. There's the difference. We're not asking whether we're going to be behind the team. We're asking whether we're going to be behind Moyes. Well, there's a schism there. There's a I, schism I, there. We know that. I don't think the fans will be behind Moyes at all tomorrow. I think they're already starting to start turn on some... That's not going to help the players, though, is it? That's no, my only concern. It's no, counterproductive. It, but it never does, Rob. It never does. And there's the, and there's the thing. We, we've, we've had this before. We had this with the bond scheme. We had this with... Um, we had this with in and around the time of Makari as well. We had this with Avram Grant. We had all of this with um, with Avram Grant and Martin O'Neill. We we had we've had all of this before. We listen. I'm 44 this year, and I've seen this on this kind of fan shit. I say fan shit, shit in the fan is what I mean, not that we're being cunts. I mean, the, the shit, it's the fan yeah, from yeah. the fans. Um, I've seen it at least five times, Rob, it, you know, six times in, in, in my West Ham lifetime. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I remember the guy coming on and slamming the corner flag with, with Julian Dick. So, you know, we, we all remember Burnley a few years ago. We remember that we, we remember the staged protests because of the bond scheme. We remember the stage protests exactly right behind, in fact, where I was sitting on Wednesday night, um, you know, with the whole Burnley thing. We remember the balled out mosh that we were mob that were giving it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I've seen all of this. I know I know this air, this feeling that's currently around our club. It is rather reminiscent, isn't it? Previously we never had a voice, Rob, you and I like this. Mm-hmm. Same as a lot of other YouTube channels weren't around when, when you know, especially with the bond, uh, the bond scheme and everything else. But yeah. now we've got a chance to, to to air our grievances and to to say what we're thinking. And mm. I think the sad thing I is, yeah, it was, yeah, I remember that. I remember Emily Town, Kent. I'm not quite sure. We won that was. game. I know, but it was still piss poor, Rob. As as. You know, Trevor Morley was talking about with Cotty and, and the boys the other night. Farnborough. You know, I remember these days. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When yeah. It was torrid. Um, you know, it's it. Listen, it's what we do. It's what we do. Unfortunately, we can't keep doing it with the promise of the board that we're going forward. You know, and what we've seen over the last two years. Well, um, that, I, I hope landscapes. Like, Football landscape's completely different. I mean, we're talking about a lot of what you're talking about was pre Premier League. That's now you've got a situation where we've got a sixty two and a half thousand seat a stadium that we don't own who we're in a lease. And a hundred and sixty, a hundred and eighty million pounds, I would suggest is a conservative e- estimate for relegation one season. Let me ask you this. Are we Previously, previously we were sacked the board. Right. Burnley, Burnley, Mark Noble. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, yeah. We're not sacked the board now. Do, no, do, because he's been backed. Yeah, and this is it. This is what I was about to say. The board have chucked the money where their mouth was, yep. and they've given him 180 million quid. So this this is slightly different. This is slightly different because this is this is solely aimed mm. at the one guy that's in charge of the football team, if you will, the eleven picking the eleven. So, mm. yeah. Uh, well, if we compare and contrast him to the guy that's in the opposite dugout, Brendan Rodgers, well, this was a team that that had the opposite situation to us. We was going out and buying anything that moved with one hundred and eighty million quid burning a hole in David Moyes' back pocket, whereas Brendan Rodgers was selling players left, right and centre. Absolutely. And they only brought one player, Valt Fies, the um, Belgian centre-back. That's the only Absolutely. player. And I think that was on deadline day. But they had and they started. This was money. This was this was down to the money that they yeah, had. Yeah, but, 
by not what I'm by saying is, is, but what I'm getting at is, is that you've had David Moyes who has been back to the hill. I mean, whatever you think of GSB, they stumped up. Whether it was with a little bit of help from Kuczynski, who knows? But he fundamentally, he's been given that money to to plough in and, and do. And you've got to assume these are his players. You have to, then, because he's played he's played them when they've been available by and large. But Brendan Rodgers has has had no. Well, he basically had nothing. Well, know, I'll apart tell you what, from one player. I tell, I tell you, I tell you, my takeaway from the two managers that you've just as you mentioned them there, yeah. Hmm. Rogers lost Fafana. He lost Schmeichel. Yep. It's a couple of other bits and pieces of his of his original jigsaw that went right, and he bought in one player. Okay, and based off the back of that, they had to change the way they played. Okay, they had to because they'd lost the players that they had. Jamie the, Vardy's getting on. The goalkeeper, you know, he's he's not he's not Schmeichel. Yeah, he's not as commanding. He's not as um, vocal. Um, you know, Fafana's gone. They've they've lost that that solid solidity at the back. And Rogers yeah. had to find a new way of of playing, a new set of tactics, a new way of going about it. Rob, right? And yep. he did, and he has. Let's not mess around. Leicester now are playing some fantastic football. To right? be honest, they always have under Rogers. Right, but things weren't working initially at the start of the season. Hence, why they found themselves where they were. Hmm. So Rogers, what Rogers went and did was Rogers adapted, overcome. Yeah. Yep. Moyes hasn't. And there's the difference, Rob. Moyes is doing the same shit. He's making the same mistakes. Um, Rogers learned. He studied. He figured out. He changed. He made differences. And now look at them. Moyes is going, it'll work. It'll work. It'll work. It ain't working. It ain't working. Quite clearly, but he's refusing to make the change, Rob. Hmm. He's refusing to to adapt and overcome. Yeah. Well, if he's not going to do that, then he's got to go. There you go. He's, Rogers has evolved as a manager. He's seen. Yeah. He's seen where the problems were because he couldn't play the same way. Right. We can't play the same way. We, sorry, let me rephrase that. We couldn't play the same way as we did before when we bought Haller and Anderson. We couldn't do it because they were different players to what we had originally, yeah? Well, we bombed Haller out. We bombed Anderson out. And look at them. They both had career resurgences. And at one point, Haller looked like he was going to win Champions League Golden Boot. And he got a, a multi-million pound move to, from what I understand... Is his boyhood hero, his boyhood club, yeah, in in Dortmund. That was it. That was his his dream move, right? Really? And right. From what I read, when it happened, yes, right. Okay. Obviously, he was in Germany before, wasn't he? With um, Werder Bremen. Was it Werder Bremen? Was it was, it? and it was, and uh, it was his teammate. The other fellow, oh, said, Jovic. Jovic, right? So he knows German football, and that was his dream move, right? That was what I read when it when when the initial move went through. So he went from a team like us that didn't know how to use him, didn't play with his strengths, didn't adapt our football to include what he did. He went to a team that played to his strengths and adapted their football, and he banged in goals left, right, and centre. Hat tricks in Champions League, rada, rada, rada. Frankfurt, thank you, Ken. Right. We then had. Antonio, and we played one way, one way, which was the same way we did when we had Haller and we were moaning that it didn't work with Haller. And we, we, we did well. But we bought Skamaka, we've bought um, Paqueta, we've got Benny coming to the fore now in, in the role that, you know, he wanted to be and he's playing really, really well. We've got Corne. Oh. We can't play the same way because this is the problem. This is the problem. Um, someone, so I can't remember who it was on Twitter, but it was really interesting. And they were talking about 
the way that Antonio plays, and we were talking about, and Danny spoke about it, the way Antonio plays and the way Sufal was up and down allowed Bowen the space. They cited the Leon goal. Um, what, Bowen's the th- goal? The third goal. Antonio yep. pulls wide. He receives the ball from Fornells, drags all the players over, lays it back to Fornells. Fornells doesn't even have to look to play the pass to where Bowen is. Well, that's not Skamaka's deal. That's not how Skamaka no. do things, does things. That's not how Paqueta does things. And not learning that and not adapting our game to get the best out of Bowen, Paqueta, Skamaka, and or Benny over on that side. Well, that's as he's been men- as as has been mentioned so many times by Hammer eighty nine and a couple of others. Rob, he's a dinosaur because he's refusing to adapt. And what happens to dinosaurs if they don't adapt is they die out. It's the same as anything. And unfortunately, um, uh, uh, the, the, you cannot defend anymore, Rob. You can't. Well, we definitely. Well, I'll say we can't defend. Actually, if you if you look, I don't think our problem is defensively. Our problem is quite clearly offensively. I was on with um, Chris on Leicester till I died last night, and okay. if you look at the, the 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 conversion percentage of shots to goals converted into goals, it's about ten percent. I mean that's pathetic. You look at Leicester's column, and it's basically double. Yeah, there's there's the problem right there. We've I think we've conceded fifteen goals in fourteen Premier League matches. Now that's not bad. That's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. But I think we've scored 12. There's your problem. We're not scoring goals. We're, but we're creating chances. This is the thing. It's, it's, we're creating chances. But either they're, they're chances with a small H rather than a capital H, or we're just crap at converting them. It's one or the other. It's real simple. Anyway, before we go too much further, ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested to know... The officials, the man with the whistle is Jared Gillette. The assistants are Simon Long and Steve Meredith. The guy that's got the board is Josh Smith. The VAR is Chris Kavanagh. And his assistant is Dan Robathen. Um, Any thoughts on the officials, Duke? Only the, uh, the referee is the best a man can get. Other than that, let's move on. Okay, right. Um, I have got... Allegedly, I'd like to put that out there before I get... I, I've got I've got some uh, starting eleven predictions, so let's get into it. I've actually got a little bit of a bonus because you know normally I'll I'll just do one version of West Ham and one version of the away team. I've actually got two versions of West Ham. I thought this might be quite interesting. This is what I believe David Moyes will go with Duke. And you might notice it's vaguely familiar. Fabianski in goal. Back four. Yeah. Back four is Cresswell, Zuma, Dawson and Kerr from left to right. The double pivot is Captain Declan Rice and Thomas Sojek. The three offensive midfielders are Ben Rama left, Bowen right and Skamaka as the playmaker. Oh, sorry. With Paqueta as as the playmaker with Skamaka as the nine. Very, very familiar. Now... I'm going to show you guys. This is my 11. This is, for what it's worth, good, bad, or indifferent, this is my 11. Fabianski, oh, Fabianski in goal. It's a close thing between him and Ariola. I could probably go Ariola for the, 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 the quicker counter attack that he would present. But Cresswell left, Ashby right. We know that's not going to happen with Moyes, but I'd, ha- I'd have him in. Because I wouldn't like, do it. He's turned around and said, no, Rob, let him rot. Fuck off. See ya. That's no, it. No, but, but the, I don't believe that's irretrievable. Personally, I think if, if he thought that he was going to get a fair crack of the whip, if he thought he was going to get game time, I think he would stay, right? That's just my opinion. I've got nothing to, to base that theory on. It's just my opinion. So I, But I don't think you should cut your nose off to spite your face. If he's the best right back that we've got at the club, and if he's going to affect this result in a positive fashion for us play him. He's getting paid by the club, so let's utilise him while we've got him. And who knows, by utilising him, he might think, maybe I've got a future here. Maybe I might want to put pen to paper because I actually, I'm settled in London. I go up to Newcastle. It's a different environment. And to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to get in the team there. Whereas here, he's got half a chance. That's just me. That's just my opinion. Um, the, the centre-backs, I would have Big Nathan and Kurt Zuma as as the uh, the central defence. 
I would tell Declan Rice, you are the shield. You're not going box to box unless there's a situation later in the game when the game's put to bed, the, the situation is right where you can do that. But to begin with, you are the shield. No ifs, no buts, right? He would then have, just slightly ahead of him, Lucas Paqueta and Pablo Fornells. Now, whether you're a Pablo Fornells fan or not, he's got three goals in his last two starts. You can't really sort of, you can't sort of put him on the bench or, or whatever. So he has to play. Paqueta, I know he didn't have a good game against Palace, but let's be fair. It was his first game back after an injury layoff. So I'm prepared to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. I would then put Ben Rama at the apex of that midfield diamond. And I would just say to him, you go and just cause damage left, right, central, go where you want, float and just cause them absolute chaos. And I would go old school and I'd have a strike partnership of Skamaka and Antonio. Now, you guys in the live chat, which which lineup do you think would be better? I know what I think is better. Duke, over to you. I'm aroused, Robert, by your um, your absolute commitment to this formation. I am aroused. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm also aroused the second it came up, apart from the Ashby conundrum. Um, don't really care too much for him right now. Um, he's, he, I, get it. I get it, but I'm also not caring too much for it. Um, but, I mean, if you don't do that, you kind of go slightly wider uh, diamond players. And you can still keep four nails there, but you put him, push him a little bit further right. You drop Ben Rama down to the left and move him slightly further out. You put Paqueta in that 10 um, and you say the same thing to Paqueta. Yeah, like, like Ken says there, um, I'd swap Lucas and Benny. That'd be that'd be where I that'd be where I'm at. Now that being said, he's not going to because he no. refuses to. He has two formations that he likes to play. One was the previous one, and the other one is a three five five three two. Right, that's or five four one five five. Five, five, five. He plays five at the back. Let's not three dick, zero. Let's not you're right exactly. Let's not dick around. That that was a that was a a five man against Blackburn. I don't care. Now the problem, the the annoying thing is, Rob. Mm. We can all see football fans can all see. Ken said I called this at the start of the season, right? Four four two diamond. Yep. We can all see what this would bring to yep. West Ham Football Club. We can all see yep. what this would actually do for West Ham as a, as a, as a game tomorrow, right? I, I, think... I know, Hammer 89, I know, as I say, I, 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 that's the team that I believe that Moyes will put out. This is the team that I would put out. But, then, but he's never going to do it in a million but years. But then he also agrees with you, Rob. That would be yeah. the 11 if Poch was in charge, right? That, that's what he says underneath there. And, 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 and agreed, you know, that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Now, for me... That's the 11. If we can all see it as football fans, right, we've, we've watched the dross and the dirge that we've all watched this season, right? We've watched it game after game. It works in Europe. It works in Europe. I don't care. It, and, and the proof in the pudding is that it has worked Probably in Europe if. and we qualified in top spot, right? Best yep. record in Europe this so far this season, right? It works. It doesn't work in the Premier League. Again, we've seen it over and over and over again. We all believe that this works in different variations, slightly different tweaks, as I said, further left, further right. Other mm. other channels are saying exactly the same thing. I've seen multiple versions of this on Twitter and on Facebook, um, you know, Instagram. I've seen multiple versions of this formation. We all can't be wrong, Rob. It, it won't happen. Like I say, this is just a little bit of make-believe, ladies will, and gentlemen. If he wants we to... all know that that's my 11. That's David Moyes' 11. I'm fairly convinced that's what's taking to the pitch tomorrow in Claret and Blue. And you want to know Not what? that. You want to know what? If he go doesn't go with something similar to what you've picked mm -hmm. and he sticks to the same old, same old, he can collect his P45 at quarter to five tomorrow night. 
if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. Let's have a look at the Leicester eleven. Uh, in wall, in goal, you've got Danny Ward. Now, James Justin is out with, I believe it's a, a cruciate ligament injury of some description. Um, I believe it will be a 4-1-4-1 formation of Thomas left, Castagna right and Fies and Amati as the centre-backs. Sumare will be the midfield anchor. Harvey Barnes on the left. James Madison called up to the England World, Squ- World Cup squad and very deservedly so, in my opinion, yeah. on the right. Uh, Dewsbury Hall and Tielemans as the central mids with Patson Dacker uh, playing as the number nine now. Ah, uh, where, where do you want me to start as to the danger men? I mean, Barnes, oh my goodness. Dakar, oh, his, his pace is going to cause problems for whoever we've got in, got in uh, the back line, which is why I want a word, because I think if Dawson's there, yeah, oh dear, that, that could be quite painful. Madison, Tielemans, I mean, that that's a pretty tidy 11, it has to be said, Duke. What are your thoughts? Should we go back to, uh, go back to January, Rob? Yep. How many times did I mention the name Pats and Dacca? Oh, quite a few. How many times did I mention the name Huang Hee Chan? How many times did I mention the name? How many times did I mention the name Kareem Adeyemi or uh, Florian Verts? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we've gone out and we've got Skamaka now. So I can't say that we haven't got a, a decent attacking option. Okay, so. And to be fair, Dakar hasn't set the world on fire. Chan certainly hasn't set the world on fire. Kareem Adeyemi now plays for um, Bayern Munich. Yep. Um, you know, <laughs> cheers, Andy. Um, that being said, it's not Dakar that worries me tomorrow, Rob. It's concerning, but it doesn't worry me in the way that Barnes, Dewsbury Hall, Tielemans and Madison worry me tomorrow. Oh, Mm. my God. Like, come on now. For a team that are where they are and where they have been, no need for it. No need for them to be where they are or where they are, where they were. Yeah. Um, Tielemans nearly joined us. In January, uh, in August, if the rumours are to be believed. He nearly joined Arsenal. Possibly will still join Arsenal in, in January. Certainly ain't coming to us. If oh, I we... think he'll wait until the summer, mate, because then he can get you the, the big signing on fee, can't he? He ain't yeah. going in January. He's no point. Oh, mate, if I was him, I'd go to Arsenal in January and win the Premier League at the end of the season. Come on now. Behave yourself. Maybe, maybe. And, and, and he could be the missing link, Tielemans, to Arsenal winning the league. I think he's outstanding. I've got yep, agreed. all the time in the world for Tielemans. But his link-up play with <laughs> his link-up play with the man next to him in Madison and Tielemans scares the living shit out of me. Right? Stop it now because I... Oh, I just can't. I just can't. Oh, please, let's just now make beeping noises at each other. <laughs> Welcome to Lewisham. Yeah, I, I, mate. It, it, if they don't, if they don't create enough chances to be three 0 up by half time, I'll be very surprised. Very surprised. That is yeah. a banging eleven. It, banging it is. Seven. It is. I, I just. I want to see two up top, Duke. I want to see an. I'm I'm old school, same as you. I want to see a partnership. I want to see a Cotty and Mac of any type of thing going yeah, on. Yeah, but football. Parson and Kitson. I mean, and the funny thing is, is that I don't know if you've noticed it. Combos, Rob. Yeah, I don't We've know if you've basically... noticed it. In the last sort of like however long, I've noticed there's more and more teams that are putting out four four two. Whether it's four flat in midfield or whether it's a diamond or whatever, but generally. I've seen I've seen a few more teams going four four two and having two proper strikers or maybe a striker and a an attacking midfielder buzzing around sort of thing. Mate, Let's let had, go. Let's cha- had, change it up. We've had some cracking partnerships. You know, you mentioned Cotty and, and Macca. You mentioned um, Hearts and Kitts. He is Bill. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw one more in there, Rob. Yep. I'm going to throw one. Decanio Canute. Yeah, Canio Defoe. 
Yeah. So I think De Canio Canute for me just edged it because obviously that was the one. Um, Not but, um, De Canio and Titi Kamara, no. No, let's leave that alone. I had that shirt. Still got that shirt somewhere. Sure. <laughs> Fact, Sorry, I think it's in that bin bag down there. Not being thrown away. I've just got to sort it out. Um, but yeah, we've had some banging partnerships. And the irritating thing is, although football evolved away from that, you know, it's like fashion, Rob. Everything goes around in a circle, doesn't yep. it? Yeah. You know, the, you know, there's that. Uh, who's the, I think it's Eddie Izzard does the joke. The Canio one shot. Maybe not. Um, Actually, maybe. You know, it wasn't uh, too uh, bad at the beginning. Eddie, Eddie Izzard does a joke, Rob, where he goes, you know, you know, you have a, you, you're standing there leaning against a car. You've got like a, either a matchstick or a toothpick in your mouth back in the 60s. That was cool, hip and groovy. You know, you come around that full circle, you have two matchsticks or two, two toothpicks, one in either side. You look like a dickhead. And that's essentially what this is. It's, it's that circle. You know, everything with fashion, it all comes back round. Mido and Benny McCarthy, leave it alone. We have that circle, yeah? Um, we, we had the partnership with Cotty and, and, um, and Macca. Then we didn't. And then we had the, the partnership with Kitson and Hartson. And then we didn't. Then we had the partnership of the Canio and Canoe. And then we didn't. And we've not had one now for such a long time where we've had a partnership. Oh. Oh. Oh, but you, I don't think they played together. I think that we that Kepper had moved on, hadn't he? By the who time was the time. other? Who was the other Italian that came in? Uh, it was Borriello and Nocerino. Oh, Nocerino, I quite yeah. like him. I quite Marco like him. Borriello and Antonio Nocerino. Who was the curly head? Who was the curly head striker, Italian fella, banging save from Joe Hart against Birmingham? Oh. Kent, help me out. Kent, help me out. What was his name? Curly haired Italian. What Dan, Daniel Di Michele? No, 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 no. David no, no. Di no. Alessandro Diamanti. Oh, Diamanti. Loved him. Loved him. Yeah. Could have done so much. That was a banging free kick, by the way. I can see it in my mind's eye. Then top bins. Yeah, yeah. that is Ken's in. I knew Ken wouldn't let him down. Morley and Chapman. Morley and Chapman. Morley and Chapman. Speedy, Speedy and Clive Allen as well, if if I remember rightly. Yes. You know, we yes. Some- Banging, banging partnerships. Who yeah. did Les Ferdinand play out the front with? Uh, what, for us, it was would have yeah. been De- uh, Defoe. Big man, little man, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. See, again, again, it's... <laughs> there's your partnerships. They work. They work. Yeah. Schemacher. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It doesn't even have to be Antonio, Rob. It could be Bowen up there with him. Mate, I know he's not is, had no. seasons, and, and I know no. taking him out of the team based on form, I'm fine with. I'm fine with. But as a partnership, he could play up there alongside Skamaka. Mm. I do believe that I really think he could. I'm not saying he should tomorrow, and I'd love to see him and Antonio. But then, to be honest with you, I didn't see much of him and Antonio um, on Wednesday mm. um, against, Blackburn, uh, yeah, against Blackburn. So, you know... Um, who did Tevez play up front with? Um, he played up front with uh, Zamora. Yeah, see? Because if you remember, I don't know if you've ever seen the interview with, with Bobby. He turns around and says that that last game at Old Trafford, oh. they played they played as a two when they had the ball, when we had the ball. But when we lost possession, Kirbishly set it up so that whoever was nearest, to, I can't remember if it was nearest to left or nearest to right at the time that the, the opposition won possession, they had to drop in as the wing player. Yeah. So. Ashton and Harewood, hammer. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, there's, there's. Oh. FA Cup semi-final, I remember that at um, uh, Villa Park. Ashton with a header. Ashton, and then what Harewood a, smashes it in. What a flick on, I remember. That'd be, that would be a good, that, oh. that'd be tip top. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Uh, we got to get down right. to it. <laughs> let's, let's do, let's do our going. score predictions. Yeah. Okay. So, Duke, uh, how's it going? 
And you guys in the live chat, pile yours in as well. <sighs> Do I have to? Do I have to? You got to put. You got to do it, mate. Okay. You could do what I did earlier, where I did. This is this is what I believe Moyes will go with as a starting eleven, and this is what I'd pick. If, if he you goes, want to do sort of like heart versus head, go for it. Okay. If he yourself. goes, if he goes with, if he goes with his formation, which he will, um, I will go with either Andy or Charlie's result. Yep. A three-one or a three-nil reverse. Wow. If he goes with his formation and decides My we're going to take the game. Yeah, your formation, and he decides to take the game two. Yeah, I can see us winning three-one, Rob, with that formation. What we're saying um, is, is I should be West Ham manager. I mean, don't push your luck, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do, Rob. Let's get on. Let's. I'll tell you what. Let's get on to um, Epic Games. Download Epic Games on your on your phone on your right. laptop. Okay. Go on there and for forty four quid, download um, Football Manager twenty three. Yeah. And let's do it. Let's you and me have a face off. Um, no, I've never see... played any of these games. These sort Mate, of like football management I, I, simulation I love things. Them. I've, I've I've lived on them, and there's you know I, there was a guy. In fact, we came up against him earlier in the season. He's one I I always bought on. FM20, still do actually, because I still play, I'm, I'm so out of date that I'm playing that one. Um, yep. Sebastiano Esposito, um, he played for Anderlecht, scored the goal for Anderlecht, I think, against us. Oh, hello, look at this. Hello. God. Champions yeah. League quarterfinals. I've, I've actually got West Ham in the Champions League semi-final and got spanked on aggregate. 11 nil by Barca. Listen, listen. You might have got West Ham to a Champions League quarter final, but I bet you've never managed a team to win the North Kent Cup. No. I I mean, fair enough. I think you are, you you beat me. <laughs> yeah, I'm my heart will always say West Ham will get a result. My heart always will. Even if the result is a draw, just something. Yeah. My head's telling me something completely different. My head's telling me that we get done three one. And I, I was on with Leicester Chris yesterday, and I said I gave that prediction, and I, I'm not going to change it. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope, I hope, with all my heart, Duke. I hope we go out tomorrow. I hope we put in a complete performance from minute one to minute ninety. I hope it's a performance oh, that shit. every single fan leaves the ground and every single fan that watches it is proud of that performance. That's what even I want. Even if we lose, even if we lose, even right? if we lose, but, yeah. but fundamentally I want a team that goes out and puts a little bit of pride yeah. into, into the badge. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I but, think Andy, I think Andy said it earlier. If we pick your formation that you chose, go out, give it a go and lose one nil. Well, yeah. then the signs were there. I, and yeah, I, I because it, take you've that. had a go. You've, you've changed it up. And all right, you've lost 1-0. It's, it, it was, it's always going to be sort of like you, you, you're fairly evenly matched teams, really. But, yeah, I, I agree. I think if, if he changes it up, if he does what we know he should do, on form, he's got to drop Socek. On form, he's got to drop Bowen. Sorry, they oh, might yeah, be really right. nice nice guys you're, and, and, you're and right. in the dressing room, but they need dropping. You are right. There's no two ways about it, Rob. But it's not us doing the job, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I uh, say, my head says a 3-1 reverse. Uh, whether whether they will pull the trigger on Moyes, well, should they? Probably. But then again, I suppose we don't know what the conversations are between Sullivan and... I guess Mark Noble's got to be involved in this to a point. I mean, he was on Talk Sport and he sort of referenced the fact that David Moyes has sort of said that this was always going to be a transitional season. And that's fine. I've got no problem with it being transitional. I'm not saying that we should be finishing top six, top seven again, but we should at least be competitive. And at the minute, we're not. We're nowhere near it. We're nowhere not near at it. All. No. Anyway, 
Um, right, we've got 15 likes at the minute. We've got 19 of you watching. So if any of you 19 haven't already done so, could you nip across to YouTube? If you're not watching it on YouTube and you're watching it on Facebook or Twitter, just quickly jump across to, to YouTube for us onto the Full From Iron YouTube page and just, just drop a like on it. As I say, it does help the channel out tremendously. And we thank you for that. Um, and just one other thing we'll do before we go. Duke, could you do us a favour and just press that big red button? Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security, and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Come on, you irons. Well, for those that are going tomorrow to the game, just sing loud, sing proud, give give the team everything you can, whether you're a Moise in or Moise out, give the team everything you can. What? You're going tomorrow, aren't you? I am. Yeah, you're whereabouts are you sitting, Rob? What what area of the stadium you're sitting in? Just for those that might be watching later that might want to come and say hello to you and see you before the uh before the game. Roughly I will be, whereabouts. I will be sitting on my ass. Do you, not a not an area number or 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 a seat end or an entrance or anything? No, no. Okay, I, no I, I I I like to just keep me head down and you know keep myself to myself. Thank you very much. If someone listen, if someone comes up to me and says hello, but I'm I'm not going to sort of like say oh I'm in block this and seat that and row. You this. you go in by the you go in by the support by the um club shop, don't you? That's that's your entrance around that side. No. You're such a troublemaker. I know. Thank you. You're horrible. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, as I say, if you're going tomorrow, guys and girls, just, just sing as loud as you can. Give the give the team all your support. And keep your fingers crossed that David Moyes actually is going to put out a team, 11, a formation, Has with a little bit of fire in their belly, bellies that gets the job done. Yes, Come indeed. on, you irons, and uh, we'll reconvene on Sunday.